My dad's got bad feet. He says it's cause when he was wee, his mother made him wear shoes that didn't fit him. She made him squash his feet into shoes that used to be his brother's cause she couldn't afford to buy new ones for the both of them. He's got curly toes now because of it. They're all twisted around on top of each other like the plates my ma puts in my hair. You can see all the big blue veins in his feet like somebody's drew them on with a felt tip pen. He can't bend his toes right and he has to wear his toe caps to work in case anyone stones in them. Our school's going to be starting swimming lessons soon and I can't wait. I can't swim yet, so I asked my dad if he'd take me to the bath to let me practice. He said no. I said, how no? He says, because I can't bloody swim, that's how no. I said, aye, but you don't need to be able to swim to get in the pool. He didn't say much afterwards. He just pointed at his toes and said, if you were me, would you want to show off feet like that? My name's Eli Percy. I'm a Scottish writer from Renfrew. Um, I usually I, I write in Scots um, and in English. And um, I, t I try to write about people who have maybe been ignored, um, marginalised folks, working class people, queer people um, that don't always get shown um, in Scottish literature. And I also like to look at the, the sort of crossover between queer working class people, um, working class disabled people, um, to give folk a voice that, that maybe haven't had it before. Duck Feet is set in Renfrew, which is where I grew up, and it follows the life of Kirsty Campbell, um, a 12-year-old working class schoolgirl who lives in Kirtland, Newcastle, in Renfrew. And it goes from her first year at the high school when she's 12 through to sixth year when she turns 18. Every chapter um, kind of has a different theme. So there's, there's maybe stuff about bullying, um, underage drinking, like there's, there's knife crime. There's, there's all different themes. Um, Kirsty is a sort of a sort of wallflower. She, she watches what her pals are doing and she kind of reports on the problems that she thinks they're having, the difficulties they're having going through school. Charlene's her best pal that she's had since um, primary school, since they've been, well, before they were at primary school, since they're four years old and they've gone through primary school together. And when they get to the high school, she starts to see Charlene um, getting into trouble and like palling about with people that she's like, oh no, I don't want to hang about with that, you know? <laughs> you know? Um, and Charlene doesn't necessarily have the, the guidance that, that Kirsty's mum and dad give her um, to say, oh, don't bring that in home or whatever, you know, or, or don't, don't shoplift. <laughs> um, Charlene is very much left to her own devices um, and, and she doesn't make the best choices. Um, and I, I think for, for me, the, the friendship between Kirsty and Charlene is probably the heart of the book because um, Charlene does get Kirsty into trouble. She does cause her a lot of problems, but Kirsty always goes back, she always forgives her. First time that I'd written anything, it was a really bad poem, and my mum and that were like, "Oh, that's that's great. You're, you know, um, writing for cathartic reasons, and you're a teenager, and you're angsty, and you hate the world." Um, but then when I started to say I'm going to be a writer, mum and dad were like, "Oh no, you're not going to make any money doing that." Teachers at school would say, "No, you no, get your head out the clouds. Folk that you don't become writers." Um, and the books that I was that I was reading, I never saw myself or anybody that I knew reflected in these books. And it wasn't until I was about 19 or 20 that I went to um, an adult education class. I'd been going to other creative writing classes at that point, um, and I, um, one of the tutors gave me a book by Jim Kelman, which was How Late It Was, How Late. Um, and she said, I think you'll really identify with this book. And to this day, I swear to God, I don't know whether she heard my accent and thought, you know, this, this is a book about, this is a book, won the Booker Prize. It was about Sammy, who's an alcoholic and his, his troubles with the drink and how, you know, how it affects his life. I don't know if she thought that maybe I'd come from a background with, you know, an alcoholic father, which I don't, um, or whether it was just, she just thought, I'd like the book. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I did. I, I loved the book. I loved that, you, you know, I'd seen something that had been written um, in a Glaswegian accent, um, and I thought, oh wow, uh, you're allowed to do that, and it won the Booker, and um, I don't know if there was, it was quite controversial, and some people just did not like it, um, but suddenly it opened the door for me, 
And I was like, I'm going to have a shot like that. Why can I not write, you know, the way that I speak? I never sat down and thought, I'm going to write a book about Renfrew. I just sat down and wrote. But there came, there came a point where I started to think, oh, wow, um, Kirsty and her family live in the same street that I grew up in, and that was totally accidental. But there was never, she couldn't have came from anywhere else. Um, I mean, sense of place is really, really important to me. So as soon as I started to think about, you know, about Renfrew and about how, like, it had to be set in Renfrew, I started to go, right, where would she have went? Well, she starts off at the Renfrew swimming baths, the Vicky Baths, I went to the Vicky Baths. You know, I also went to the lagoon, but you always end up back in the Vicky Baths, because it was a, it just, I liked that swimming pool better. There's, there's some of the places in it that are being fictionalised, like the, the local shops and stuff like that in Kirtland Uke. There isn't an Iqbal's, but there is in a book. Um, and there's, you know, the, the high school is, is not Renfrew High or Trinity High. Um, the high school is a mixture of different high schools that I've been to and high schools that, that, I, that I spoke to people um, that all had very, very similar experiences that lived in sort of Renfrewshire. The Paisley Library gets mentioned in it and the Renfrew Library, all places that I went to. I think, for me, I like naming all the, the different streets in Renfrew because I did do a paper round the same as Kirsty. My paper round was Kirtland Newt Road, um, down to like, McLuhan and Rannock Drive. Our road always had a spilt wheelie bin for some reason. <laughs> Didn't matter what day the week you went down, somebody's wheelie bin had always blown over. A few years ago, I'd went out with um, one of my pals that I'd been meeting up for a drink I hadn't seen her in a couple of years. We'd went to high school, we'd hung about when we were like 15. Um, I had come up in conversation, I said, I, or sort of group of, the group of pals that she had, I was the, the new person added in. And I said, I'd, like, part for you and you, and they didn't really like me. And she's like, you're talking about it? And I said, they were always a bit funny with me. And I said, like, was it because I'd had a brain injury and they thought I was a bit stupid? And she's just like, no, she's just like, never, please never think that. She's just like, because of her jealousy. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, well, I thought you were posh. And I was like, posh? And she's just like, well, you had a dad that, you know, was still with your mum, that had a job and wasn't an alcoholic. And that absolutely blew my mind. Um, because without thinking about it, I'd noticed that there were inequalities within our housing scheme. If you're not from there, you can, you can understand the story, but you can only understand it on a certain level. Um, and I noticed that like working class lives on TV and, and books um, were always being written by people who were middle class and it was always about poverty. And I was just like, well, I never felt that we were poor. We always had shoes <laughs> and, clo and clothes and like, you know, there was always a dinner on the table for you. I never knew we were working class until I think, I, I don't think I knew until I was in my late teens, maybe not even until that, that tutor handed me that book by Jim Kelman. Um, when people talked about deprived areas, I didn't think that they were talking about, like, where I lived. I, I tried to send out the manuscript as a whole thing, back when it was 65 short stories, um, was what it was originally. It's now 70 chapters, um, and it's a novel. Um, but I was sending it back out back then, and publishers would come back, agents would come back and say, you know, it's really funny, you can really write, but no nobody's going to buy this, because it's just too niche, and, like, it's really hard. Lots of people don't, you know, don't want to read about something that's written in Scots, they don't really want to read about somebody from this background, and I was like... Okay, but they weren't saying it was bad. <laughs> they were just saying, no, nah, it's never going to sell. Nobody's going to buy it. Um, so I just kept, like, I just kept sending them out, um, sending them out, sending them out, getting the rejections, sending them back out. You know, there's, there's like, there was a couple of stories that maybe had like 15, 20 rejections. Nobody liked these stories, and and then they've ended up being the stories that folk have said, I really love this chapter. Did I think it was going to end up winning the Salter? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, did I think that I'd be getting messages from folk every single day of the week telling me that they were cracking up at the farting um, chapter? No. <laughs> um, I just thought that 
like I love the character of Kirsty Campbell. I love Chris Rice. I love Wally. They feel like real people to me. And the feedback that I was getting for folk that I went to high school with that had read me bits of it, I just kind of felt like somebody's, somebody else is going to like this. One day there's going to be a publisher. Um, and it didn't really matter to me whether it was like 10 folk or 100 people that, that read it. It was never really about that. It was just, for me, it was about finishing the book to the standard that, you know, that I just wanted to tell the story and I hoped other people would read it and find it funny. Um, and then, of course, Monstrous Regiment approached me and asked me if, if I would, um, if, if they could, if they could publish it, or what they said was, could I novelise it? And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but I didn't realise that, and I'd been asked to novelise it. What they were asking was a complete structural rewrite, start again for page one, because when you write short stories, it's completely, it's completely different for writing a novel that has through lines. Um, uh, yeah, it was, and it took me like another another year or so to, to do that, that rewrite through the, the pandemic. Um, and then of course, it didn't come out when it was supposed to. And then the printers got COVID three times. Um, and we had to keep going back on social media and saying, we're really sorry, the book's not out yet. <laughs> um, and I can't, I can't believe that, the, in particular, the Scottish public just kept going, yeah, brilliant, we're looking forward to it. And people really got behind it. The book, it sold out, what, about six or, six or seven weeks? Um, it's just, it was just amazing. Sometimes you have to just ignore what other people are doing. Something, sometimes you just need to go, this is what I want to do, this is what, this is what I enjoy. Um, don't, you know, don't stop doing things because other people around about you don't like it.